hey, hey. Welcome to the Watchmaker's Lathe. This little guy needs a tailstock turret. There have been many cases already where I've had to make a batch of screws of a particular size on this little thing, and something like a turret attachment would really help speed up repetitive work like that. You can see it's a little bit crowded here, so it's going to need to be a very small turret. It's going to involve swinging the compound out of the way a little bit. I don't have a lever slide rest for this. If I did, that would certainly help save some space. For these Swiss-style D-bed type lathes, whatever you want to call them, I haven't ever seen a tailstock turret for them. Understandably so. I mean, it has to be very small. Most of the machines like this don't have collet holding tailstocks. They have a small ram with a minuscule taper in the end. It'd be totally unsuitable for mounting a turret, even a small one. This machine lends itself fairly well to it, having a lever tailstock and having a Webster Whitcomb collet taper or 8mm collet taper in the end. And the design I'm going to use for this turret attachment is a bit oddball, but it's very similar to the tailstock turret for the rivet. It would be a lot easier to show you than to describe it. Here is the rivet tailstock turret. It's a little unusual in its orientation. Of course, the drawback here is that you always have all six tools in the stations sticking straight out here. Of course, with a more conventional design with a tilted head with a taper to it, the unused tools stick off in a less obtrusive direction. One advantage to this design, though, is that it takes up much less space between centers. It's pretty simple, like most tailstock turrets. An indexing pin. It does have a locking nut on the back. It has these offset clamping rods that lock the tool holders in place. I'm missing one. That'll be another subject for another time. And that's it. Overall, I like this design for a small lathe like the watchmaker's lathe, but I will have to be careful of the tooling sticking out of the face here. So what I've put together so far for a design is fairly complete, and it's sort of a, an over-engineered version of this. We'll start with the collet shank that fits into the tailstock. The tailstock of my watchmaker's lathe holds collets, the same Webster Whitcomb or WW type that the headstock takes. Nothing too exotic here. 40 degree angle on the taper, 8 millimeter body. The back plate, if you want to call it that, where the collet shank mounts, it has a tapered seat to match this bronze bearing here. This hole here is an oil port. This through hole here is to accept a, another bronze bushing. We can see down here. This bushing is for the index pin, which you can see here. In order to have room for a spring to go between the index pin and its housing, and to have enough travel for the index pin to disengage from the index holes down here, I needed more length to the housing than this back plate gave me. So my solution was to make a separate bushing to go through that gives me a little more height there. The index pin, if you look real close, you can see there's a taper on the bottom that matches the taper in these indexing holes on the body of the turret. The taper is pretty arbitrary, but it's, uh, you can see, quite shallow. I'm going to use whatever I happen to have for a taper reamer. 
it's a shallow angle somewhere in that ballpark. Screw threads in SketchUp are a royal pain in the neck, by the way. Once you get down a process, it's not too bad. There's no built-in functionality for it. You have to generate them yourself. This shaft that's part of the main turret body, you can see is keyed on one side to fit a key slot in the bearing here. So the two bearing surfaces when rotating the turret are this taper here and the matching taper down here. The shaft here should never spin inside of the bearing. This bunch of crazy nonsense, Swiss cheese it looks like, are the tool stations. Like the rivet turret, the tools mount to the face of this. And in my model here, I show the clamping rods, I guess you'd call them, completely encompassing. You can see that doesn't leave very much meat on the side of these at all. And if I make them much bigger in diameter, I start to run out of meat on the side walls of the turret body. And I really don't want to make the tool holder bores any smaller. So when I build this, I'm going to deviate from this model a little bit and make these clamping rods offset, much like they are in the Rivet tailstock turret. I apologize. I almost forgot to show the penny for scale. There we go. That's better. It's time to go make some chips. Thanks for watching and see you soon.